Today we are going to talk about the second important uh, theory in learning, what is called as operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is also known as instrumental conditioning. The reason being that the animal concerned or you say the uh, person concerned, his or her behavior it or its behavior basically has something to do with the anticipation of the probability of the occurrence. Okay. So, unlike uh, classical conditioning where uh, you saw Pavlov's dog uh, being uh, passively uh, getting conditioned to salivate on the sound of the bell, instrumental conditioning is different. It is basically a form of learning in which the consequence of the behavior uh, produces the changes in the probability of occurrence of that very behavior. So, the responses uh, they are instrumental in receiving rewards or skipping punishment. So, reward or punishment that is something uh, which becomes important. So, either you want to receive the reward or you want to escape the punishment and this in turns uh, keep shaping your behavior and you get instrumentally conditioned. B. F. Skinner was the man who gave this very concept and uh, you saw in the beginning uh, the pigeons at Mumbai. Skinner's operant conditioning experiment was based on the study of pigeons in the lab. So, now uh, this was what the experimental protocol was. The pigeon was put in a cage okay, and as you can see here a colored uh, space and exactly in the center here the pigeon was supposed to pick here and once the pigeon would pick uh, at that very specific location as you can see in second image this very image, okay, then you realize that the food palette used to come out. So, Every time you pick at the right point, the food palette will come. This was the location, no? this is the location where the food palette used to appear. So, repeatedly the pigeon was uh, getting trained to pick at a specific location in order to get food. And as you can see here, uh, the uh, box was basically designed specifically for this very purpose. And if you see this very image, the response lever is put here. Okay. And then the beak of uh, the pigeon, this very point, had basically a, a metallic surface attached to it, which in turn used to help the pen recorder. Okay, and uh, here you see that uh, the drum here. This paper roll will keep moving, okay, uh, in this very direction. So paper will move in this very direction. And then based on the pecking behavior of the pigeon, the pen will keep recording it on the paper. Okay. So, here uh, now what you see here, this is basically the pecking behavior. So, this is how uh, now in a very beautiful manner, much more objective scientific manner, uh, B. F. Skinner conducted his research on pigeons. And this gave him the precise information as to how reward works in the case of uh, these very pigeons. And this led to a mega theory in learning what is called as operant conditioning. Now, in the case of operant conditioning, the participants they actively respond to the stimuli okay, according to uh, the way his or her responses affect the stimuli. Therefore, it will always know uh, look at how either the organism is trying to escape the punishment if it in case uh, it happens to be an obnoxious type of a st uh, stimulus or the tendency of the uh, respondent of the subject, the participant to get rewarded for the behavior that one is coming forward with. Okay. So, that is the reason why operant conditioning basically is considered to advocate shaping of behavior. So, how your behavior gets shaped okay. and this shaping is dependent on basically the receiving of the reward or skip of the punishment. And shaping basically in psychology is considered as a complex response 
which is learnt by first learning a series of simple responses. So, uh, you must have uh, seen you know uh, toddlers how they learn how to walk. Okay. So, you learn small steps first and then gradually you combine them to learn a, a big thing. You learn simple set of responses and then you combine them together. Uh, this creates a learning of a complex concept. Okay. Whole behavior gets uh, you know, shaped and therefore, later on when the organism responds in that very given situation and primarily uh, you look at the fact that the entire behavior finally becomes a complex response against a given stimuli. One very interesting aspect before we go into the details of operant conditioning was the fact that uh, Skinner also came forward with the idea of pigeon guided missile. Remember that was the uh, time uh, when World War II was uh, in progress. What he had done is that once again he had a gold electrode uh, that covered the tip of uh, the pigeon's beak and you see the warhead of the missile. What uh, he had done was as you can see in the figure here, okay, uh, this is just one of the holes where uh, one of the trained pigeon was uh, being kept here. So, in the nose of the missile which had three compartments. Okay, three specially trained pigeons they were put there and the pressure sensitive screens uh, displayed uh, the image of what was in front of the missile. Okay. These images were projected through the lens in the nose cone okay. and because these pigeons were specially trained. So, what used to happen is that the contact with the screen on the image of the targets was always projected okay, send a signal informing the missiles control mechanism to the target location. Okay. And the few grains of the food will occasionally uh, you know it was given to the pigeons in order to maintain their tracking behavior. Because the pigeons were trained to peck at a particular location in order to receive food. Okay. So, they kept on uh, you know maintaining the uh, trajectory of the missile because their correct pecking led to a positive res uh, result basically they were getting few food grains. Now, the pigeons in the warhead of the missile operated the flaps on the missile and guided it home by pecking at an image of that very target. And when the missile was in flight, the pigeon pecked the moving image on the screen. So, this produced corrective signals to keep the missile on its uh, you know, correct course. You can see on the your screen right now, uh, Skinner uh, busy with uh, his instrument. As you can see here, okay, uh, he uh, know, subjected those uh, animals in a particular box, which uh, know, after his name is nowadays called Skinner box. In the earlier experiment, he had the pigeons and you also saw the pigeon uh, guided missiles. Now, you see uh, white rats being used for experimental purposes. Okay. And uh, pigeon was a case where uh, know, uh, the reward was taken into account, the pigeon was supposed to pick at the right location and this led to uh, know, uh, repeatedly rewarding the pigeon by giving few food grains. In this case as you can see in the Skinner box a rat was kept there and this was uh, you know, the experimental demonstration of uh, what you call as the tendency to escape punishment. This rat was subjected to uh, electric shocks which used to come in the metallic grid that you see at the uh, bottom of the cage, the floor of the cage and in order to uh, you know, uh, escape the mild electric shock the rat had to uh, okay, uh, make certain uh, desired movement okay. and that desired movement would basically help the rat escape electric shock. So, this was basically again making the rat learn how to respond okay. and but this response was not in order to receive an re a reward, but this response was basically in order to escape the punishment. Okay. So, basically what operant conditioning uh, said was that we have two types of situations. Okay. You can have positive reinforcement that would uh, know shape the behavior or it could be negative reinforcement that shapes the behavior. Positive reinforcement basically the frequency of response gets strengthened because it is followed by a rewarding stimulus. No? So, you uh, do a behavior a desired behavior and the desired response in turn uh, know gives you a reward. Whereas, in the case of negative reinforcement the frequency of the response increased 
because the response was followed by removal of the aversive stimulus. No? So, you saw the first case positive reinforcement was the case of the pigeon, okay? because the response of the pigeon got strengthened, because every time it would correct, uh, come forward with a correct response, a reward would be given. No? In the case of the white rat, basically it was removal of the aversive stimulus. No? So, electric mild electric shock was given to the rat okay? and the response increased, because the rat realized that by giving this type of response, by giving a particular type of response, it could basically make uh, itself escape the punishment that it was experiencing, the aversive thing, the electric shock that got removed. Now, besides you now considering the reinforcement as positive and negative reinforcements, in terms of especially human beings, you can also uh, you know, think of primary and secondary reinforcement. Now, remember one thing, in uh, human beings also positive and negative reinforcements will work, okay. but uh, the way uh, uh, you know, various factors that motivate such uh, to perform certain type of act, some of these you would realize are biologically driven, hunger, thirst, sex and sleep, okay. they are biologically driven, whereas many other things okay, such as uh, appreciation such as uh, you know, a token of smile, such as uh, uh, so giving some money okay, or uh, you know, recognizing you by conferring a, an award to you, these could be secondary reinforcers. You know. So, in the case of human beings, we realize mostly that we could have uh, you know, uh, a conditioned behavior that comes out of either primary reinforcers or secondary reinforcers. Primary reinforcement, it basically works in the case of uh, innate behavior. No? So, if you are given food for uh, behaving in a particular way, if you are given water if you behave in the desired way, if you are allowed to have sex because you give the desired uh, behavioral outcome. Okay. So, uh, provision of providing food, water, sex would be considered as, a, as an example of primary reinforcement. Whereas, cases uh, where uh, no, you consider the reinforcement uh, as positive, uh, but it is not basically dependent on your innate biological tendencies, but they give you things which are otherwise socially acceptable. Okay. You have learned to value those things through your experience. Uh, say for instance, uh, uh, you come forward with a desired uh, response and then you are given a reward of say 5 lakhs, at, uh, up, that is the prize amount. It is the value of uh, you know, the award that becomes a reinforcement for you or simply the fact that everybody gives you a standing ovation. Okay. People stand up and clap for you or uh, even situation when uh, know your near and dear ones, those who uh, know basically have value uh, in your uh, eyes, they just give you a smile which would work as a positive reinforcement for you. Okay. Now, these are secondary reinforcements. So, human beings you would realize that they are not only guided by uh, primary reinforcement, but they are also guided by secondary reinforcement. Consider this very situation, uh, you are uh, in a shopping mall and you are trying to you know, buy a new shirt, you need a new shirt. So, what do you do? You enter a mall, go to an appropriate shop and then say for example, you have tried brand X. This very behavior does not uh, no lead to a rewarding type of an outcome. You realize that uh, the shirt is not fitting you, okay. it is an unfit. You drop that, you go to brand Y. Okay. The shirt fits now, but then you realize that fine the color is not that attractive. Those who are uh, no, along with you, your friends or your family members, they tell you that no, uh, even though it is a fit, uh, but then you know the color is not so attractive, it is dull you drop brand Y also. You uh, try brand Z and then you realize that it is not only a perfect fit, but even the color uh, no, the print is very attractive. What you do now? This very reward does not only uh, allow you to buy that very shirt at that moment, but uh, later on when you will go for shopping the next time instead of trying brands X and Y, you will jump to brand Z, because now you know that it is brand Z which might you know give you the colors of your choice and it also tells you that fine brand Z uh, will uh, largely also have uh, 
uh, those uh, shapes of the shirt which fits your body. Okay. Now, the entire purchase behavior is controlled by uh, operant conditioning and the reward that you get out of a given situation. The way we discussed important concepts in classical conditioning, let us now talk about important concepts associated with operant conditioning, similar type of things. No? One, the process of extension. What we had discussed earlier, the way we had defined extension, it is exactly the same that we were going to talk about here. In operant conditioning, extension basically occurs when you realize that the previously reinforced response uh, is no longer reinforced. Okay? So, something that was appreciated, that was being uh, given a reinforcement, you realize that the reinforcement is not being given. And once the reinforcement is not being given, that specific response starts diminishing. Okay? So, the tendency of the individual to give that very response now goes down, it is no longer uh, there simply because the reinforcement has also uh, not been given in that very situation. So, removal of a reinforcement that leads to complete fading out of the desired response, it is called extension. Again, generalization and discrimination are two important considerations here. Generalization would mean that you give the same response if you realize that the stimulus is the same. Okay. Uh, in the case of uh, the example of uh, pigeons uh, know, near uh, gateway of India in Mumbai, you realized that whether you throw the grain okay, on the ground or uh, know, you hold the grain in your own uh, know, uh, palm, the pigeons come and they pick, they eat uh, the grain. Okay. So, where the grain is, is not important. No? So, even though the situation has changed, you realize that the stimuli is by and large the same. No? It is the food grain, which was in one case lying on the ground, on the other case it is you know, in somebody is holding it and therefore, the response is extended there, that is generalization. Okay. Same response, if there is uh, you know, uh, similarity in terms of the stimuli that is being given. Discrimination would be the reverse of generalization. Okay. Uh, responding to a stimuli, uh, where you realize that uh, the signal Okay, uh, somehow uh, is not the same. So, if you realize that it will be reinforced in one condition, you realize that it will not be reinforced in the other condition and because you know that this will not be reinforced in the other condition, you do not do that. Okay. Important concept also in operant conditioning is of punishment. Okay. Punishment basically uh, no, is a consequence which decreases the likelihood of the behavior, because if that behavior is you know, again and again repeated, every time the individual would be punished for that very act. And if you realize that the likelihood of punishment is increasing because of uh, repetition of the behavior, you finally decide that this is a non-doable type of an act, you do not perform that. Now, punishment can also be positive and negative in nature. Okay. This is something very interesting to understand in psychology. By and large, we understand that punishment is punishment and therefore, uh, the commonsensical uh, understanding of punishment is that it is negative. Primarily, technically speaking, punishment could be positive, it could be negative. Now, a behavior decreases when it uh, is followed by an unpleasant stimuli. Okay. So, decrease in the behavior when it is followed by unpleasant stimulus that is positive reinforcement. But if the behavior decreases when a positive stimulus is removed, so in one case it is followed by unpleasant stimulus, in the other case the, uh, you realize that the positive stimulus is removed. In one case it is given, in the case of positive punishment it is withdrawn, it is removed in the case of negative punishment. Okay. So, understand one thing, uh, reinforcement could be positive, negative and similarly punishment can also be positive as well as negative. Let us now understand positive negative uh, no, reinforcement and positive negative punishment uh, once again using this very grid. So, in this case you have the stimulus, so you think of two conditions, it is a 2 by 2 table, no? exactly the way we had talked about the signal detection theory in the case of uh, perception, okay? where the signal was present, signal was absent, the response was either yes or no. Here either the behavior increases or the behavior decreases. Okay? Second case, where the stimulus is present or the stimulus is uh, removed, it is not present. 
Now, what happens? If the stimulus is present, remember this, if the stimulus is present and the behavior also increases, okay, this would be a case of positive reinforcement. Why? You gave the stimulus and the behavior increased. So, this is positive reinforcement. You remove uh, the stimulus okay, and removal leads to uh, no increase in the behavior that is negative reinforcement. Okay. Now, increase in the behavior has been taken care of. Now, we are not talking of increase in the behavior, rather now we are talking about decrease in the behavior. Okay. So, now think of this situation. So, we now come to the second situation, where we are not talking about increase in the behavior. Remember earlier we were talking in with respect to increase in the behavior, we are now talking about decrease in the behavior. So, the result finally, is going to be decrease in the behavior. And again, stimulus you think in terms of presenting the stimulus or you think in terms of withdrawing the stimulus, no, removing the stimulus. Now, if uh, the stimulus is presented, okay, so now you have presented the stimulus, behavior decreases okay, and this, le this leads to positive punishment. Okay. So, you present the stimulus leading to a decrease in the behavior, positive punishment. Okay removal of the stimulus and this leads to decrease in the behavior, this is considered as negative punishment. So, having understood uh, the whole concept of uh, classical and operant conditioning, let us now uh, know, try to make a distinction between the two, this we will do in our next, next lecture.